Here are the video solutions for Pearson Edexcel Functional Skills Maths Practice Set 3. This is level 2, section A, which is the non-calculator section. So let's take a look at the very first question. So PQRS is a quadrilateral, PQT is a straight line, and RQV is a straight line. Write down the value of x. Well, if these lines are straight lines, then this angle here, x degrees, and the 84 degrees, these angles are opposite angles, and opposite angles are always equal. So therefore, x is also 84 degrees. Work out the value of y. OK, well, this is a quadrilateral, so the angles in the quadrilateral all add up to 360 degrees. So if I subtract the 84 degrees, the 216, and the 27 from 360, I've got the value of y. Now, rather than doing three subtractions, it's a lot easier if I just add these three angles together and then subtract that answer from 360. So what is 216 plus 84 plus 27? 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 7 is 17, carry the 1. 8 plus 2 is 10, 11, 12, so that's 2, carry 1. 2 plus 1 is 3, so this is what I'm subtracting from 360, so 3, 2, 7. 0, take away 7, that can't be done, so I'm going to reduce the 6 to a 5. The 0 becomes 10. 10 minus 7 is 3, 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, so therefore y is 33 degrees. Now for the next question uh, we need to work out whether Prasha's estimate is sensible. So we know that she is paid 52 weeks of the year, 37 hours per week and £5.68 per hour. Well instead of using the number £5.68 why don't we just round that up to £6. For 37 hours per week 37 is approximately 40 and 52 weeks, let's just call that 50. So if she earns six pounds per hour and does 40 hours per week, then that's gonna be six times 40 for her weekly wage and then times 50 for her annual wage. Um, so what is 40 times 50? Well, four times five is 20. I therefore just need to put those two zeros back in. So I'm now thinking about, well, what is six times 2000? Well, six times two is 12. I overlook those three zeros, so I'm going to put those three zeros back in. So my estimate is 12,000. Her estimate, her estimate is 11,500. So I would say, um, is the estimate sensible? Yes, estimate is sensible. Okay, let's move on to question number three. So write eight eight percent as a decimal. Well, to convert a percentage to a decimal, we need to divide by 100. So the question is, what is 8 divided by 100? Now, if you struggle with this, you might want to write 8 as 8.0. And I normally teach people just to put some zeros on the left-hand side. Um, if you're not sure whether we're putting the zeros on the left, then you can put them on the right as well. But we want to make this number smaller. So if we want to make the number smaller, we need to be moving this decimal point to the left. And we're going to be moving it two positions to the left because there are two zeros in 100. So the decimal point will move to here. So the number will now be 0, 0, 0, 0.08000. 0, 0, 0, 0. And hopefully you can appreciate that the zeros hanging at the end there aren't doing anything. And that first zero isn't needed either. So the answer is 0 0.08. B is a question all about bid mass. Now the B for bid mass means brackets, so we need to um, take care of the brackets first. Now 12 take away seven is five, so the question is now 64 multiplied by five. Now do we have any indices? Uh, well 64, or the square root of 64, we can consider that um, a, a power. Uh, what is the square root of 64? The square root of 64 is eight, so the question is now eight times five, and eight times five is 40. Moving on, four fifths minus three eighths. Well, we can't subtract eighths from fifths because the numbers on the bottom are different. So we're gonna have to fiddle the fractions so that both numbers on the bottom are the same. So what I'm gonna do is go through the, um, the times table of the bigger number until I, so in this case, I'm gonna go through the eight times table until I find the first number that can be divided by five. So eight can't be divided by five, neither can 16 neither can 24, neither can 32, but 40. Eights go into 40, of course, this is the eight times table, but so do fives. 
So I'm going to convert four fifths into fortieths, um, and I'm also going to convert three eighths into a certain number of fortieths. Now, four fifths, how many fortieths is that? How many times do I multiply five to turn it into a 40? I times by eight. So for an equivalent fraction, I need to multiply the top by eight as well, and four eighths are 32. Eight multiplied by five gives us 40. So for an equivalent fraction, I need to multiply the top by five as well, and three fives are 15. So the question is now 32 fortieths take away 15 fortieths. So what is 32 minus 15? 2 minus 5 can't be done, so 3 becomes 2, 2 becomes 12, 12 minus 5 is 7, 2 minus 1 is 1. So 32 fortieths minus 15 fortieths is now 17 fortieths, so that is my final answer. Okay, let's take a look at question number 4. So Aditi wants to make a shoe tray. The tray will hold rows of shoes, and she wants each row to hold 6 pairs of shoes. Uditi measures the width of five pairs of her shoes and those are the results. So to find the total width of six pairs of shoes, she's going to multiply the median width of these pairs by six. Okay, so what we need to do first of all is find out the median of these pairs of shoes. So what we need to do is put these values in ascending order. So the smallest is 18.2. The next smallest is 18.6. Next smallest is 18.9 then it's 19.4, then 19.7. So to find the median, I'm gonna chop one off on the left and on the right, and I'm gonna do the same again until I've got one in the middle. So 18.9 is the median. Now it says here she's multiplying the median by six. So what is 18.9 multiplied by six? Well, let's work out 189 multiplied by six. Nine six is a 54, so that's four carry the five. 8, 6 is a 48, 48 plus 5 is 53, carry the 5, 1 times 6 is 6 plus 5 is 11. So if 189 multiplied by 6 is 1134, then 18.9 times 6 is 113.4. There's The question has one decimal place, so therefore the answer needs one decimal place. So we've got a width now of 113.4. But the width of the base of the tray needs to be 10% more than the total width of six pairs of shoes. So I need to increase this by 10%. So first of all, well, what is 10% of 113.4? Well, we just need to divide this by 10. So that's shifting the decimal point one position to the left. So that's 11.34. So if we're increasing by 10%, we're increasing this amount here by 11.34. So 113.4 plus 11.34 what does that come to um, very important when you're adding decimals make sure that the decimal points are in line I've not done a brilliant job there um, 4 plus 0 is 4 4 plus 3 is 7 3 plus 1 is 4 1 plus 1 is 2 1 plus nothing is 1 so we've now got um, a width of 124.74 but we're also told that we need an extra three centimeters at the end of the tray for this frame so if three centimeters on the right and three centimeters on the left so that is six centimeters so 124.74 plus six comes to 130.74 Aditi thinks that this tray here can hold six pairs of, her sh of shoes in a row well it can't because 127 is less than 130.74 the tray will need to be 130.74 centimeters or more these are the video solutions for Pearson Edexcel Functional Skills Maths. This is practice set 3, level 2, section B, which is the calculator section. So let's first of all take a look at question number 1. So Susie wants to make a dress. To make the dress she needs a piece of fabric with a length of 2 and 3 quarters yards, but fabric is sold in lengths measured in centimetres. So um, work out the length of fabric in centimetres that Susie needs to make the dress. So the question is simply, can we convert two and three quarters of a y yards into centimeters. Now to go from yards to centimeters, we need to go via inches first. Now the first thing that I would recommend doing is turning three and two and three quarters into a decimal, 2.75, that's much easier on the calculator. So we're converting yards into inches. I know that one yard is 36 inches, so therefore 2.75 yards is going to be 
2.75 multiplied by 36 and 2.75 multiplied by 36 is 99 so that is 99 inches we also know that one inch is 2.54 centimeters so therefore 99 inches is 2.54 centimeters multiplied by 99 and that comes to a total of 251.46 centimeters so that's our answer for first uh, for number one 251.46 question number two nice ratio ratio question we know that the ratio is of color to hardener to thinner is 2 to 1 to 10 but Jamal has 375 mil of thinner so what I'm going to do is scale this ratio up now how many times greater than 10 is 375 well the answer to that question is well what is 375 divided by 10 that's 37.5 so if I multiply 10 by um, 37.5 I get this figure of 375 so I'm scaling the ratio up so I also need to multiply 1 by 37.5 which is nice and easy that's 37.5 and 2 multiplied by 37.5 is 75 so if he has 300 I'm um, sorry if he has yeah if he has 375 mil of thinner he'll therefore need 37.5 mil of hardener and 75 mil of color color so in total that will create 75 plus 37.5 plus 375 mil of paint and if we add these figures together that comes to 487.5 mil of paint um, another thing we could have done which might have been a bit quicker although less easy to understand is that we're scaling this ratio up 37 and a half times this ratio is composed of 10, 11, 12, 13 parts. So we could simply have multiplied 37.5 by 13, and that would also have given us our answer of 487.5. So question number three, quite a tricky question this. So we don't know how many tickets he sold in 2018, but we know that in 2019, he sold 105276 and we know that that is a 7% reduction. So usually what, what you would want with a question like this is in 2008 Aaron sold a certain number of tickets. This was reduced by 7%. How many did he sell in 2019? But this question is the wrong way around. But we need to think of it like, um, like it was the style of question we like. So the original number of tickets, I'll write O dot N for the original number of tickets. This has been reduced by 7%. Now when you reduce something by 7%, that means it is 93% of what it was originally. 100 minus 7 is 93. So the original number, if we work out 93% of it, we would get 105,276. Now if I'm working out 93% of something, I would multiply it by 0 0.93. So 0 0.93, that is our percentage multiplier for a 7% reduction. So if the original number of tickets multiplied by 0 0.97 gives us this new number, then what I can do is just flip this around and say that 105276 divided by 0 0.93 will give us the original number and 105276 multiplied by, uh, sorry, divided by 0 0.93 comes to 113200. So that was the original number of tickets. Now, um, this is definitely the sort of question where I would um, do a check anyway, because these are quite tricky questions. So if this was the original number of tickets, and we're reducing that by 7%, so that would mean we would multiply it by 0 0.93, as explained earlier, do I get this answer here? type it into your calculator and you'll see the answer is of course 105276 so that confirms that the previous answer of 113200 is definitely correct let's move on to question number four so we need to write down the coordinates of point a so remember we need to do the horizontal first so we're going across to minus four and we're not going up or down at all, so that is simply minus four, zero. B is the point two, zero. On the grid, draw a circle with diameter A, B. So first of all, let's mark in the point two, zero. So we're going two across 
and zero up. So that's this point here. So this is the diameter of a circle. Now the diameter is one, two, three, four, five, six. So if the diameter equals six, then the circle is gonna have a radius of three. Now, what is the center of the circle? If this is the diameter, the center is gonna be halfway across. So it's gonna be three across from either side. So one, two, three. So the center is here. One, two, three, perfect. So what I'm gonna do is go up and down three. One, two, three. And go down one, two, three. And what we need to do now is put our compass point here and extend it out to three centimeters and do a circle all the way around. Um, and that should go through all of these points. Um, I'll give it a go, but I don't imagine this will be particularly pretty, given that I'm just freestyling this. As predicted, pretty awful, um, but vaguely recognizable as a circle. So that is what we need to do for question number four there. Moving on to question number five. Um, quite easy to get this one wrong, um, but it's not too bad. We need to work out the surface area of this doll's house. We know the base and the roof that has been done already. So what we need to worry about is the front and the back and the sides. It's the sides that are a little bit of a pain really. So let's work out, uh, first of all, let's do the front and the back. Now the front is a rectangle which is 0 0.96 multiplied by 0 0.63. That's for the front, but the back is also 0 0.96 times 0 0.63, so I'll just double that. So I'll just make a note that this is the front and the back. Now let's work out the sides. Now what I would do is turn this pentagon into a square and a triangle. So the square is 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.63 and again there's one square here and one square over the other side so I'm going to double that as well. And also we've got this triangle which is 0 0.7 across and we need to work out the height. Well the height is going to be the difference between 0 0.75 and 0 0.63 and that is 0 0.12. So the area of a triangle is the base times the height divided by 2. So that is 0 0.7 times 0 0.12 divided by 2 and again there are two of them so we're going to multiply by 2. Um, perhaps you've noticed that well what is the point in dividing by 2 and multiplying by 2? You might as well do neither as they'll cancel each other out but it doesn't matter if you keep them in there that's totally fine so all we need to do is work out these values so 0 0.96 multiplied by 0 0.63 times 2 is 1.2096 0 0.7 times 0 0.63 times by 2 that comes to 0 0.882 and for the two triangly bits that's 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.12 that comes to 0 0.084. So we need to remember to factor this number in when we're doing our addition. So 1.3824 plus 0 0.084 plus 0 0.882 plus 1.2096. And that comes to a grand total of 3.558. So Jaden has enough paint to cover 3.5 meters. So has he got enough paint to cover all the surfaces? Well, no, he doesn't because 3.558 is greater than 3.5. So the final answer there is no. Right, let's move on to question number six. So here is a formula. M equals 2.67A. Now that means 2.67 multiplied by A divided by 4Y, which means four lots of Y. So we're just going to substitute in the values for A and Y. So 2.67 multiplied by 8 divided by 4 multiplied by 3.5. So 2.67 multiplied by 8 is 21.36. And we're going to divide by 4 times 3.5, which is 11. For me, it's much safer if you do them uh, separately. And 21.36 divided by 11 comes to 1.5275. 7142 and uh, how many decimal places did they want? They wanted three decimal places. So therefore we're interested in the value of the fourth decimal place. Anything beyond this we can completely ignore. If this number is five or greater, which it is, then the column to the left is gonna move up one. So this five will become a six. So the answer is one 
0.526. Let's move on to question number seven. So Nikos owns a restaurant. The table shows information about the number of customers that visited the restaurant on each of the 31 nights in August. But notice we've got some blank columns, so we're probably gonna to need to fill these in. The mean number of customers per night in July was 32. Nikos thinks the mean number of customers per night in August was more than the mean in July. So we need to work out the mean for August. Now we know that on two occasions there were between one and 15 customers. Now we've got grouped data here, so we don't know on these two nights whether it's possible there was just one customer. It's also possible there could have been 15. So what we're gonna do is assume that on those two nights there were exactly, well, the midpoint of one to 15. So this column here is for midpoints of these data ranges. So to work out the midpoint of one and 15, we can add one plus 15, which is 16, and then divide 16 by two. So the midpoint here is eight. And 16 to 30, 16 plus 30 is 46, and 46 divided by two is 23. So that is the midpoint here. And 31 to 45, so 31 plus 45, Five is 76, 76 divided by two is 38. So that is the midpoint here. And 46 plus 60 is 106. 106 divided by two, that is 53. So what we're saying on, um, well, on these two nights is that we're assuming there were eight customers. So if there were eight customers on two separate occasions, then in total, there were 16 customers. Remember to work out the mean, we, it's the total divided by the number of values. So here it's gonna be the total number of customers divided by the total number of nights. And we know that it's 31 nights in August. Now it's not the actual total, it's an estimated total. This 16 is an estimate because we have assumed that on these two nights there, there were exactly eight customers, but there could have been fewer, there could have been more. Anyway, we're gonna do exactly the same thing with these columns. Seven multiplied by 23 is 161. 12 times 38 is 456. And 10 times 53 is 530. So the, t the grand total is gonna to be all of these numbers added together. So the total number of customers is 1163. So our final calculation is 1163, our estimated total number of customers divided by the number of nights in August. And that comes to 37.516. So is Nikos correct? So he is, his um, hypothesis was that the, the mean for August was more than the mean for July. Well, the mean for July was 32. 37.516 is greater than 32. So yes, um, Nikos is correct. So our final calculation was 1163 divided by 31 to get 37.516. So what we can do now is 37.516 and multiply that one by 31 to see if we get back to 1163. And the answer is of course, yes we do. Although it's not gonna be exactly 1163 because I've um, slightly rounded this number, um, but it's close enough. We know we've, it's close enough for us to know that we've got it right anyway. So this is quite a tricky um, question. However, the key to this is writing out a two-way table. We know that we are dealing with three age groups. There's the under 25s, there's the 25 to 40s, and then there is the 40 plus age group. And there are two choices. There's preferring online shopping or buying in an actual shop. Now, what I'm gonna do is write a total row here as well as a total column. Now we know that in total there are 100 people. So the total of the under 25s, the 25 to 40s and the 40 pluses is 100 and the total that prefer online shopping and those that prefer going to shops will total 100 as well. So it says 56 of the 100 prefer to buy online. So the total that prefer to buy online is 56. So therefore the total that prefer going to a shop is 100 minus 56 which is 44. It says 27 of the people aged 25 years prefer to buy online. So we're looking for under 25 
prefer to buy online so this figure here is going to be 27 now with that figure I can't work out any other numbers at this stage 12 of the 33 people aged 25 to 40 right so we know that 33 people are aged 25 to 30 so the total number of 25 to 40 year olds is 33 and 12 of them prefer to buy in a shop and therefore if 12 prefer to buy in a shop then the remainder prefer online 33 minus 12 is 21. Of the people aged over 40 years, so we're looking at the 40 plus column, eight prefer to buy online and 17 prefer to buy in a shop. Okay, so now we can work out how many 40 pluses there are. Eight plus 17, which is 25. And now we can work out these totals here. For people that prefer um, to buy in a in a shop we know that 12 were between 25 and 40 and 17 were over 40 and the total is 44 so if we subtract these figures from 44 44 minus 17 minus 12 <coughs> that is 15 so now we can work out the total of the under 25s which is 27 plus 15 that is 42 now we need to be really careful here it says one person who prefers to buy in a shop so we're looking at this line here so how many people in total prefer to buy in a shop? Well, it's 44. And of those 44, what is the probability that they're under 25? Well, 15 of them uh, prefer to buy in a shop. So out of the total of 44, 15 prefer to buy in a shop. So the probability is 15 over 44. And that fraction can't be simplified. So that is our final answer. So yesterday Benji made 48 sales in the shop, 76 online. So what fraction of the total number of sales were made yesterday were in the shop? So how many were made in total? Well, that is 48 plus 76, and that comes to 124. So that is the total number of sales. And we're looking at um, the, what's it asking for? What fraction of the total number of sales made yesterday were in the shop? Well, 48 were in the shop. So that's 48 out of 124. So there we have our answer as a fraction, but this fraction can be simplified. We need to give it in its simplest form. We have even numbers top and bottom, so let's divide by two. So that's 24 over 62. We still have two even numbers, so we'll divide by two again, and that is 12 over 31. 31 is a prime number, so we can't simplify any further. So the final answer is 12 over 31. Let's move on to question number eight. So Maisie is designing packaging for a perfume bottle. The packaging's in the shape of a triangular prism with a length of 160 millimeters, as we can see in the diagram. And she's already drawn the front elevation and the plan, and we need to draw the side elevation. Okay, so um, the side elevation is what we, we, we would be looking at if we were looking at it from the side, as the name suggests. So we would see the same length of the 160 mil millimeters, which is exactly the same as the length that we would see from the plan view. So let's just uh, see how many squares that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if we're looking from the side, then it's going to be 160 by the height. Now the height is the same as the height of this triangle here, which has a height of one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. So there we have it, even better if you use a ruler, of course. So if we're looking from the side, then what we're seeing is um, a rectangle, which is 160 millimeters by, well, we don't know the exact height, well, we can work it out from the scale. Now this is, um, we, we need to complete the scale. That's part two of the question here. Um, now we know that this is 160 mill millimeters um, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centimeters. So eight, the scale is eight centimeters to 160 millimeters. A little bit confusing because we have mixed units here. So what I'm gonna do is convert these millimeters into centimeters and hopefully we know that there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. So if I divide this by 10, I've got a scale of eight centimeters represents 16 centimeters. 
Okay, now all, we, all I um, can do now is simplify this ratio, 8 to 16, both numbers are divisible by 8. So if I divide 8 by 8, I've got 1. And if I divide 16 by 8, I have 2. So the scale is 1 to 2. Let's have a look at question number 10. Lucia is driving to a meeting. She needs to drive for 58 miles on the motorway. The maximum speed limit on the motorway is 70 miles per hour. She's not going to drive over the speed limit. And what's the minimum time she's going to spend driving? OK, um, easy enough, really. Uh, as long as we know the formula that speed is distance over time. Although we need to jiggle this around a little bit because we need to work out the time. Well, if speed is distance divided by time, um, what we can do is just swap the S and the T around. So time is the distance divided by speed. OK, so the distance is 58 miles. So the time is going to be 58 miles divided by the speed of 70 miles per hour. And because we're dividing miles by miles per hour, the time we're going to get is going to be in hours, not minutes. So the answer is 0 0.82857 hours. Now, of course, they want the time in minutes or to the nearest minute. Now, I know from experience of tutoring people, this is where um, carnage happens. A lot of people think that the answer is therefore going to be um, 82 minutes or rounded up 83 minutes. But that doesn't make sense, does it? Because um, I could understand perhaps if the number was less than 60 why you might think that it would still be wrong though but how can it be 82 minutes because 82 minutes is more than one hour now I know it seems obvious but we know that one hour equals 60 minutes so when we're converting from hours into minutes we need to multiply by 60 so all we need to do is multiply 0 0.82857 the uh, number of decimal places does continue by 60 so you've got that answer in your calculator times it by 60 and you get a total of 49.714 minutes. So to the nearest minute, we're looking at the first decimal place. This is greater than five. So the 49 will move up one and that will turn into 50 minutes. Question number um, 11. So this is a yeah slightly complicated question. So Matt and Gabrielle are planning their wedding. There's gonna be 150 people at the reception, all of the tables at, the re at their reception seats a maximum of eight. So how many tables do they need then? So total tables is going to be 150 divided by eight. So that is 18.75 tables. So they need 19 tables to accommodate everybody. Now we know that the table has a diameter of 1.7 now they're putting ribbon around the edge of the table so we need to work out the circumference now the formula for the circumference is pi multiplied by the diameter so that is 3.14 multiplied by the diameter which is 1.7 and that and since that is in meters then this um, circumference is going to be in meters as well 5.338 meters and we uh, need to add 65 centimeters to this so probably it would make sense to turn this into centimeters as well um, and 5.338 meters if I multiply that one by a hundred because there are 100 centimeters in meter I get 533.8 centimeters now I need to add 65 to that so 533.8 plus 65 comes to 598.8 centimeters so that is how much ribbon we need per table now um, since the ribbon is sold in rolls in meters I'm now going to convert that back to meters by dividing by 100 so 598.8 divided by 100 is 5.988 meters and let's just be really clear on what this figure represents this is the amount of ribbon per table Okay, so we have, um, how many tables do we have? We have 19 tables and the ribbon is 30 meters in length per roll. Okay, so what I'm assuming is that they don't, when they're putting the ribbon around a table, that they want to, uh, they don't want to 
run out of a roll on a table and then start a new roll. So they're sort of tying one end to another. So I'm going along the principle that they're trying to avoid that scenario. So if um, this is the amount of ribbon per table and a roll is 30 meters. So how many 5.988 are there in 30? Well, 30 divided by 5.988 is 5.01. So this is the number of tables that they can cover with 30 meters, well with one roll of one roll of ribbon. So we know that one roll of ribbon will fully cover five tables. We're not going to bother putting a that tiny bit of um, extra ribbon on the 0 0.01 of a table. So one roll is for five tables, so therefore two rolls is 10 tables, three rolls is 15, four rolls is 20 and we just want 19 tables so we we can't say we need three and a half or 3.8 rolls we, we're just going to buy four rolls aren't we so there's our final answer it is four rolls so quite a tricky question that one okay moving on to the final question question number 12 so Jan is writing a report about wages and she's got this information about the ages and weekly pay of eight men and we need to plot this on a graph. So we can see that the age is going up to a maximum of, uh, actually it's going up to 53 there. So I'm gonna put age across the bottom. So that's age in years of course. So I'll just label the axis that this is age in years. And I need to make sure that I go up to, well the maximum age was 53. So I need to go up to, well, probably 60. So how's this gonna work with the scale? So it would be a bit silly just to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, because then there's lots of wasted space. You wanna maximize the space available. So how about we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Yeah, that works pretty well. So zero years, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And for the wages, we are going up to a maximum of um, 686. So let's call that 700. Um, so how's this gonna work? One, two, three, four, five, six, 700, 800. Yeah, perfect, that's gonna, uh, again, we're just trying to maximize the graph space here. So 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, and 700. We don't have anything above 700, so I'm not gonna bother writing in 800. And, and that was weekly pay, and obviously that is in pounds. Okay, so now we just need to plot each point. So the first is 27 for 70. So 27 is three back from 30, and it was 470, so 400, 450, 60, 70. So two up and three to the right, to, to the left of this line going a bit dizzy just uh, staring at these dots so um, roughly there I'm not sure I've got that quite spot on um, the next one is 41686 so 41 is one after this thick line so I'm just going to go on the thick line for now and what did I say that was 686 so 650 60 70 80 so about halfway between this line and the next one above and also one across, so about there. The next one is 32514, so 30, 31, 32, so two across from th the thick line and it was 514, so 500, 510, so a t um, sort of maybe halfway between the line above and the line above that and I'd forgotten what the age was, it was 32 wasn't it, so I would say approximately there um, I'm sure it doesn't matter if you like a, a, a microscopic amount out the next one I believe was 19295 so that's one to the left of 20 295 so that is Pratt just below 300 so we'll stick that one there uh, the next 46 612 so 45 is here 46 612 so we'll just put it on six, just a tiny bit above 610. The next one is 37578. 
so 30, 35, 36, 37, so two to the right of this, and it was 578, so 500, 550, 60, 70, so um, again, I misremembered the, oh yeah, 37, there we go, so approximately there. 24, 3, 3, 8, so that's one to the left of the 25, um, we are going up to 338, so let's just put that on 340, shall we? So one, two, three, four, well, maybe just a tiny bit below if we can. And the final one is 53, 615. So 50, 51, 52, 53, so three to the right of this line, and 615, so 600, 610, 620, so halfway between these two here, and it was 53, wasn't it? So one, two, three across, so it's there, there we go. So I've plotted um, all the data as best I can. It might not be 100% perfect, but pretty close. So part B says, what type of correlation describes the relationship between age and weekly pay? Well, we can put in a line of best fit. If I draw a line that cuts through the center of the dots, trying to keep the dots as close as possible to the line, we can see that this is a line that goes upwards. So that's a sign that there is positive correlation which means in the context of this question that as we get older, we're earning more money. Okay, Jana wants to compare the variation in weekly pay of men with the variation in weekly pay of women. She finds the range of weekly pay for a sample of eight women is 437. So we want to uh, work out the range for the men. So the range is going to be the um, largest versus the smallest weekly pay. I'm not gonna take it off the graph, because well, that would just be a bit unnecessary when I can just take exact values from here. So what is the um, smallest weekly pay? That's 295. And the largest weekly pay is 686. So the range for the men is going to be um, 686 pounds. Take away the 295 pounds, which is 391 pounds, so 391, that is the range for the men. And what was the range for the women? 437, and that was the range for the women. And what was the question asking? Uh, comparing the variation in weekly pay for men and for women. Um, so we can see there is um, greater variation in pay for women. And we can, uh, we can prove that because the range for women is greater than the range for men.